What's going on, Lead Gym Beast? Matty Ice here, Leads for Locals. And in this video, I want to show you a couple of cool different ways to use forms inside of Go High Level to help you grow your business. Hopefully, help uh, some of you guys maybe automate uh, your business a little bit more, etc. I'm just going to show you how I'm using them in my business and uh, as well as for my clients, my SaaS product, etc. So make sure you stick to the end. Uh, I've got some pretty good tips in here. Might make a pretty big difference in your business. So my only ask, as usual, if you find the video helpful, please smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Always have uh, a good additional training for you guys in there. And if you don't have Go High Level yet, please go through my affiliate link again in the description. Uh, it really does help support the channel. Really appreciate it, guys. You're awesome. All right, let's rock and roll. The uh, <clears throat> the first thing that I want to go through actually is customizing the forms with uh, with CSS. I don't I don't even know what that like stands for or anything. I just know that it allows you to customize certain parts of the the form. Uh, for me, uh, the default forms inside of Go High Level, the text is really small. So from a user experience standpoint, um, I just I don't think that's very good. So I like to use CSS to uh, ch uh, to change the, uh, the the font size, basically. So I'm actually going to have the code in the description as well. If you just want to copy and paste it into your forms and use it, um, I do think it makes a big difference. So I'll just give you an example here really quick. If we go to forms, we go to builder here. All right, I'm just going to open up like uh, one of my opt in ones here. And you'll notice like the, the text is a lot bigger than, again, the default uh, font size for the forms inside of Go High Level. So uh, all you do is when you go to your form, uh, go to styles and then scroll down to custom CSS, just paste in that code and you can adjust the size right here from, you know, if we do 10, right, to you know 50, right, you can make it massive if you want. Um, I usually just keep mine at 20. I feel like that's a pretty good size and then you just save your form and you're good to go. So again, I think that just really helps with the user experience. It looks more professional as well, et cetera. So <clears throat> that's number one. Uh, number two, the uh, first way I want to show you I'm using forms now is actually a, a new way that I'm using it is with calendars. So uh, let, let's actually go to calendars here really quick. So with your calendars inside of Go High Level, the, the it just kind of has like a default form of first name, uh, last name, email, and phone number. So if we open this up here, click edit. And we'll go to confirmation. You'll see here my custom, I actually have a custom form here. It usually just defaults to none. And again, just going to be the, the basic contact info, which um, I don't I don't really ask for any more than that anyways. Um, if you if I do, I'm asking it on a survey on a previous page and then they go to the appointment calendar. Anyways, um, what I'm doing with this uh, this custom form here on my appointment calendars is trying to uh, just make sure more people are showing up for their appointment. So let me show you what I have here. And uh, so let's go to appointment calendar form. All right. So again, standard uh, uh, contact information, but I added a custom field here. It's a it's a checkbox. And it's basically just confirming that they're going to show up for the appointment, that they understand they're blocking a set of time on somebody's calendar and that I will be available you know, uh, for the appointment at my chosen time. Now, is a guarantee that people are going to show up? No, but I just feel like the more micro commitments you can get from people, the more likely they are to show up for the appointment. So um, they ha like uh, in order to confirm the appointment they uh, and book it, they have to check this box and, and read this. So the way you uh, add this is, uh, if you, again, you, on your form, you go to custom fields and you're just going to add a custom field here and click checkbox and just name it. And then right here, you type, I just typed out the, 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 what do you call it? The statement right there, click save. And then it shows up, oh, let's get rid of this. It shows up right here. And then you just literally just drag it. Okay. And then um, I make it required. So you click the element, make it required. And again, it's just one little extra thing they have to do before they book the appointment. And uh, I guess I could show you what it looks like on the actual page. It's really not much more different than what I just showed you, but I'll just go into one of my funnels here inside of my SaaS product. Let's go to appointment. All right, we'll preview it. So they'll uh, choose their day and time like usual. All right, select date. And then here's the form, all right? So, uh, and, and again, they have, they have to check this box in order to actually book the appointment. So that's a, that's a new way that I'm actually using forms. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think it's, it is gonna help a little bit. Just make sure that uh, more people show up for their appointments. Next, uh, let's see, uh, onboarding. I actually do this for uh, my SaaS product. Uh, forms can be a great way to automate the onboarding process for new clients. Uh, and 
uh, to where it, when they complete the form that you create for them, it gives you all the information you need to do whatever you need to do with their account. So I'll give you an example here. So let's go to, um, I'll just, I'll take you to the actual uh, page in the funnel here. All right, uh, let's see, onboarding form. Okay, so this is, uh, they, my, my uh, clients, new clients get sent to this page within the funnel. So after they, they order uh, and, and sign up, the next step is to complete this onboarding form so that we can customize their account. I believe in making it as easy as possible, especially if you have a, a SaaS product or SaaS agency with Go High Level, uh, it, make it as easy as possible for people to get started. And that means customizing their account for them. And honestly, guys, it takes me maybe 15 minutes, uh, 15, 20 minutes, not even that to customize a client's account. And it saves them so much time. It makes the the process so much easier for them to get started. So um, I send them to this, uh, just a basic form, first name, last name, uh, you know, just basically um, all the information that I'm going to need, including like a logo, because uh, you can obviously add, you know, file, upload, uh, custom fields to your forms and things like that. And then they click submit and it takes them to uh, an, uh, to schedule an onboarding call. So uh, I'll show you the form here really quick. Just some of the custom fields that I have. So we'll go to Elite Broker onboarding. All right. And uh, yeah, so so here's the custom field. So like this uh, this file upload one. Again, you go to custom fields, scroll down to the bottom, add custom field. This one's going to be a file upload. Just name it uh, and choose the formats that you want them to uh, to upload. And if you want to allow them to upload multiple files, whatever. So maybe uh, so I typically uh, ask for a professional headshot, so I could put that uh, you know at various different places within their funnels that we've pre-built for them, and then upload their logo uh, 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 as well as a list. If they have a past list of prospects, they can upload that list. We'll put it into their account for them as well. So a lot of cool different things you can do with these custom fields. Another one, uh, let's see, what was the, um, okay, no, that was a file upload. And then usually, uh, I, I use uh, radio and then, uh, and then text for my custom fields, but it just, it just depends. So <clears throat> anyways, uh, so that's, um, that's another way. So onboarding makes your onboarding process a lot easier. So you, you send your, uh, your clients to a page, uh, you have them fill out that form and you have all the information you need from them now to create your campaign, to customize their accounts, whatever it is that you're doing for them. So really, really good stuff. And then finally, I'll show you one more with the uh, with my SaaS product here. This is this can be used in a couple of different ways. It's it can be kind of similar to onboarding again, just depending on what you're doing. But I like to use these as a way to convert leads as well that you can't get on the phone. So let me show you what I mean here. So let's go to, uh, first of all, I'll just show you where it's at in the funnel process. So I have a funnel here built out for my pros or my prospects, my clients, um, that when they have leads come in, you know, obviously we have plenty of uh, automations that go out, uh, emails, text messages, everything to try and get the person on the phone, get an appointment booked, et cetera. But let's say, you know, you, you contact the person multiple, multiple times and you just cannot get them on the phone. For me, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not interested. Um, they became, they, they submitted your form and everything for a reason or booked the appointment originally for a reason. And so they might just not want to be on the phone right now. Maybe they're going through something in their life right now they're, or they're just really busy, whatever. It doesn't mean that they won't complete the process um, without being on the phone. So if you can put the, I guess, what you would consider kind of the final step of your funnel into a form, uh, in this case, uh, so my SaaS product, uh, we're in the business loan space we get loan applications so uh, to see if people qualify for funding. That's really kind of the, the last thing that, uh, the last main thing we need from prospects to close the deal. So if we can't get people on the phone, we have an automation that goes out that sends this loan application form. All right, and I'll just show you what it looks like. Because the, and, and the thought process behind this is, um, is if, they, okay, so they, they won't get on the phone, but that doesn't mean they won't fill out a loan application in their own time. And then we could take that information that they provide in the form and put that into an actual loan application with a lender or whatever, right? So, you know, again, it depends on the industry that you're in, but this is basically what it looks like. It's, it's a standard business loan application of just common information that, that we need uh, to see if they qualify. All right, we got a, an authorized credit check, you know, the, you know, because they they are giving us their uh, social security number, 
and you know they're uploading bank statements and things like that and we're going to use that to see if they qualify right so uh I'll, I'll show you this form really quick so we'll go into builder um i i like the because we're asking uh for a lot of information here um you, you see that i kind of have an inline we have two columns I, I just think that looks better than a really really long form one field at a time so to do that uh, let's go to loan application here all right, so to get this, uh, the, the two columns here, you're gonna go to styles and then ch uh, turn on inline forms right here. And then um, at that point, you're just uh, really adding your custom fields is, is really it. This authorized credit check, I think uh, that, that was just another uh, checkbox. Um, so not, not options. Uh, we go to uh, custom fields and then custom field checkbox right here. So basically you're just, when they check this box, they're giving you authorization to to pull credit, uh, do a soft pull or, or whatever. They're giving you authorization to do X, Y, Z. You could also even do a signature if you need one too. Um, you can you can add a signature custom field as well. So some really powerful stuff. And then you know just a um, one one last thing uh, just to clarify, I guess I don't really use like this on submit part because um, typically when I'm using a form, uh, when people submit it, it just goes to the next step in the funnel. Um, I do like to use this Facebook pixel ID though, um, because this, uh, this will, anytime somebody submits your form, it'll just automatically send uh, data back to your Facebook pixel. So uh, if you plan on running Facebook ads at any point, definitely make sure that um, you're, you're using this as well. You set up your Facebook pixel events in here, et cetera. So uh, let's see, that's pretty much it guys. I don't want this video to be too long. Um, three, you know, big, big ways that uh, I use forms in my business and uh, as well as for my clients and it, it does make a big difference in the automation process uh, um, saves a lot of time gives people what they need to you know like in my case with onboarding to customize accounts loan applications to get the information we need etc so um, anyways i hope that was helpful guys leave uh, leave your comments and feedback uh, down below any questions that you have uh about forms or anything in go high level uh, i'm totally fine with that and um uh but either way appreciate your time Really hope you guys are crushing it and I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.